Hey guys, we are staring at a rational inequality and I'm hoping to be able to help you understand how to solve these. So as I help you with this, I'm going to take you through some pretty specific steps and you'll probably be like, okay, I can do all those steps, but why did that give me the answer? Well, guess what? My favorite part is at the end, I'm going to show you why it all worked and it still blows my mind every time. All right. So when we are solving these, it's easiest to solve them when we've got all our numbers, variables, everything on one side and zero on the other. So we're good here. From there, we are going to see if anything can factor. And here we can. If you need a factoring review, I'll link a video in the corner. But I'm just going to tell you that this factors to x plus 2 times x minus 4 on top. And on bottom, we could write it as x times x if we wanted to, you know, kind of personal preference if you want to write it like that, or just leave it as x squared. Okay, from here, we are going to take each of these and set them equal to zero. So I'm going to have x plus 2 equals zero, x minus 4 equals zero, and x equals zero. Now I could write that twice since there are two x's, but I don't have to. All right. Okay. From here, I'm going to solve these. So on this one, I would subtract two from both sides and get x equals negative two, add four to both sides, get x equals four. And then that one's still just x equals zero. Now we are going to draw everyone's favorite thing in math, a number line. If you're like, that's not my favorite thing in math. That's okay. So I want to represent each of these numbers on a number line. So I'm going to have negative two, zero, and four will be around here. Now I need to know if I am going to put an open or a closed circle on each of these spots. And I know for sure that zero is going to be an open circle. And why is that? Because if I were to plug in zero, to this inequality, it would make the denominator zero, and that is massive no-no in math. So I know I'm going to have an open circle at zero. But what about negative two and four? If I plug in negative two or four for x, it's not going to give me a zero in the denominator. So I go ahead and look at this sign, and because it's less than or equal to, I am going to have closed circles at four and negative two. If that were not there, if it were just less than, it, those would be open circles. Okay, from here, we are going to do something that we affectionately call sign analysis. You may or may not have done this in the past. We're going to do it now. So I want to figure out for each of these regions, less than negative 2, between negative 2 and 0, between 0 and 4, and greater than 4, when I put in a number in one of those regions, is my output positive or negative? So the cool thing about sign analysis is I don't really care what my exact numerical answer is. I just care if it's positive or negative, and let me show you how that affects our, our problem. So I need to pick a number less than negative two. I could pick literally any number less than negative two. Let's just pick negative 10. So when I plug in negative 10, remember, I'm not too worried about my number answer. I just want to know if it's positive or negative. So if I plug in negative 10 for X, I'm going to get negative 10 plus 2, which would be a negative number. If I plug it in here, negative 10 minus 4, that would also give me a negative number. Then on bottom, I would have negative 10 times negative 10, which two negatives make a positive. So I'd have a positive on bottom. Negative times a negative on top would be a positive over a positive, which would end up being positive. All right, so this region to the left of negative 2 is going to be positive. Again, if you're like, what is she doing? Stick around for the end when I explain all. All right, now we're going to pick a number between negative 2 and 0. Let's pick negative 1. When I plug that guy in, I get negative 1 plus 2, which would give me a positive number. Negative 1 minus 4, which would give me a negative number. And then a negative 1 times a negative 1 would give me a positive. 
So then I top, I'd have a positive times a negative, which is negative. On bottom, I have a positive. Negative divided by a positive is negative. So this region here is negative. Now I'm going to pick a number between 0 and 4. Let's just pick 2. Why not? If you want to pick a different number and make sure you get the same either positive or negative with me, go for it. So if I plug in 2, on top I have 2 plus 2, which would be positive. 2 minus 4, which would be negative. Over 2 times 2 would be positive. So on top I'd have positive times a negative, which is negative. Positive on bottom. Negative divided by a positive is negative. All right, so this is a good example. A lot of times when you do these, it alternates positive, negative, positive, negative. But in this example, it doesn't. So we can't always bank on that it's going to do that. Let's pick a number bigger than 4 now. Let's just pick 10. So when I plug in 10 for x, on top I get 10 plus 2, which would be positive. 10 minus 4 would be positive. On bottom, I'd have a 10 times 10, which would be positive. And all those positives would end up being positive. Okay. What now? Why did we do this? Why do we care? To figure out where we go from here, we're going to look back our, our, at our problem. We are wondering, originally, what were we wondering? We were wondering where this is less than or equal to zero. So what types of numbers are less than zero? They're negative numbers, correct? So wherever we had the negative output when we plugged in those numbers, is going to be my answer. So this number line represents your answer, but I'm guessing your teacher probably wants you to either write it in interval notation or in, what did I just say? Inequality, as an inequality, <laughs> right? One of those two. So first we're gonna write it as an inequality. So if, you know, if we weren't doing math right now, that would be sad. How I would explain this in words would be any number bigger than negative 2 and less than 4, but you can't use 0, right? That's what I would say if I were telling somebody with words. But how do we show it with math, with inequalities, right? I would say that x is greater than or equal to negative 2, right? And it also has to be less than zero. Does that make sense? That represents that little section right there. So I could also write this as like this. If I just wanted to write it as one, those mean the same thing, right? So it can be that or x can also be greater than zero and x can be less than or equal to 4. That is for this part of my number line. And I could also write this as, we have our or, we've got 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 4. So those two are the same answer. I just kind of like to write it this way. It seems a bit less wordy, right? But that represents this answer. So what that means is you pick any number that falls in between here. Any number between negative 2 and 4, not counting 0, because that would make my denominator 0. Any number between there besides 0, you plug that in for x and it will make a true statement. You'll end up with a number over here that is less than or equal to 0. Okay, isn't that cool? All right, if you wanted to write this in interval notation, we would do a bracket negative 2 to 0 with a parenthesis. Negative 2 gets a bracket because of this closed circle because you can use negative 2. 0 gets the parenthesis because you can't use 0. So that represents this section. And then we say we put a u for union, meaning that's together with this side where you can pick something from 0, not including 0, to 4. And again, 4 gets a bracket because you can use 4. So again, these are the same answer. One is in inequality notation. One is in interval notation. All right. Okay, now it's time for my favorite part. I hope you stuck around. But if you're not, you're not hearing this. So there you go. Okay, we're going to pretend for a second. Don't freak out because I put this here. 
It's going to be fine. We're going to pretend for a second that we have been asked to graph this. So we're going to set it equal to y. Pretend we've been asked to graph this. Now I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on how to graph this because I actually have a video I'll link in the corner where I graph this exact equation. So if you need a more thorough review, check that out. But if I were to graph this, the first thing I would do would be to find my vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero. And I would figure out that I have a vertical asymptote at zero. I'm not gonna draw lines all the way down that because they're kind of hard to see, but just know there is a vertical asymptote at zero. The next thing I would do would I, <laughs> let me find my words. <clears throat> I would then look at my degrees to figure out that I have a horizontal asymptote at one. Okay, so there is my horizontal asymptote at one. The next thing I would do would be to find my x-intercepts and I would figure out that they are at negative two and four. All right, then applying what I know about asymptotes and about functions and things, I would figure out that this graph looks something like this. Okay, here we go. Looks something like that. Okay, you're like, great, who cares? Let me tell you why you care. So, what was I originally being asked, guys? I was being asked, where is this less than or equal to zero? Well, this is a graph representation of this. Where is it less than or equal to zero, guys? Let's take a look. Less than or equal to zero. We are less than or equal to zero. Oh, sorry. Pretend like that was real smooth. <clears throat> we are less than or equal to zero from negative two, that x-intercept, to zero, but not including zero. Both of those lines are gonna get closer and closer and closer to zero, but never actually touch it. So we are less than zero from negative two to zero, not including zero. And then we're also less than zero from zero to four. Okay, is this making sense? Isn't that amazing? Is that the coolest thing you've ever seen? You're like, no. But isn't that cool? So when we set all of this equal to zero, what we were really doing was we were finding our x-intercept or intercepts in this, in this scenario. There were two x-intercepts and the zero was my asymptote. So that's what we were finding when we set all of those equal to zero. That's why we did that. Then this sign analysis business that we did, that was figuring out what direction the graph, or sorry, if the graph was above or below zero. So you see from negative two to infinity, it's positive. From negative two to zero, it's that negative, negative, and then positive. There's our positive, negative, negative, positive. Guys, is that so cool? I think it's really cool, but if you don't, that's all right. I will link a playlist if you need some more examples. Thanks for watching. Bye.